In this tutorial, I'll show you how to get PlayStation 1 up and running on RetroArch. We'll also take a look at some graphic settings that will give you a modern and retro blend that will make your PS1 games look incredible. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do from the main menu of RetroArch is to go into the online updater then the core downloader and we're going to scroll all the way down to the Sony PlayStation cores and we're going to download the Swan Station core. The Beetle PSX and PCSX rearmed are also good but right now my preferred core is Swan Station and once it's downloaded it'll have the hash symbol to the right of it. Now if we go back out to the main menu and then load the Swan Station core we can go to information and then core information and if we go down to this firmware section it shows that the BIOS files are missing. Now even though it says they're optional if you try to start a game without these uh, installed it won't load. So unfortunately I cannot tell you where to find these BIOS files. You'll have to retrieve them on your own but if you have any experience at all using Google I'm sure you'll do just fine. Once you've found your BIOS files, we want to go to the main RetroArch directory and we're going to go into the system folder and we're simply going to drag and drop the BIOS files in here and we should be good to go as far as that's concerned. If you want to go back into RetroArch and just double check, we can see now under the core information that these BIOS files are now present. Now let's talk a little bit about PS1 game formats. For a long time, Bin and Q was the most popular format, or perhaps you might have used an ISO format as well. And these are still perfectly fine to use if you want. However, if you plan on having a larger library of games, I recommend the CHD, or what some call the CHAD format. It's highly compressed and will really save you a lot of space in the long run. Thankfully, there's a free command line utility called Chad Manager. I'll put a link to it in the description. It will automate the converting of our bin and queue and ISO files to the CHD format. And it's very easy to use. We just unzip the contents of the Chad Manager zip file to a folder anywhere you prefer, even on your desktop. And then we just copy our bin and queue or ISO files over to that same folder and run this Q or GDI or ISO to CHD batch file. It might take a few minutes depending on your CPU speed. It took about three minutes to do these games on my computer. There was four of them in total, so I'm going to fast forward through here. Now that we're finished, I'm going to delete these bin and Q files out of here. And when I select the CHD files, they total 1.28 gigabytes. And we can compare that to the bin and Q files, which total 2.17. So we see the compression nearly cut these game sizes in half. Pretty impressive. So at this point, with our core, our BIOS, and our games loaded into RetroArch, we can simply go in, select PlayStation, and run a game. Now there's really nothing else you need to do if you just want to play your library of PlayStation games, but I'm going to take you a step further here and show you how you can make your PlayStation games look pretty awesome. So in a previous video I went over how to use the Mega Bezel Shader Pack by Hyperspace Madness, and we're also going to be using shaders by a developer named Deweymon. I believe that's how it's pronounced. If I'm butchering that, I apologize. But either way, these are awesome shaders, and there's gonna be some links in the description below uh, with more information about them. But please watch that previous video. We're gonna be making use of those. After you've installed the Mega Bezel Pack and the Deweymon shaders, in RetroArch, with a PlayStation 1 game running, go into the Quick Menu, then down to Shaders. We'll turn Shaders on. And then we'll load, we'll go into the Mega Bezel Packs folder, 
the Duimon Mega Bezel, and then to the presets. And there's three folders in here for advanced, light, and standard. I'm going to use advanced, but if you find that it bogs down your system, go ahead and choose one of the other folder presets. Here in the advanced now, we're going to go down to the PlayStation or Sony PlayStation folder and I'm going to load this second shader in the list. There's others here you can choose from, see if there's one you like best, but this second one is the one I prefer. And it might take a few seconds to load, so be patient with it. And after the shader is loaded, I'm going to go down here to save, and then save a core preset so that this particular shader loads with every PlayStation 1 game. So now we can go back out to the quick menu and then resume and you can see the results already look amazing but let's make it look even better now back in the quick menu we want to scroll down to the core options and we're gonna go into the enhancement settings set the internal resolution to 3x now you can try to go higher than this uh, but on my video card which is a GTX 1060 it actually crashes. It, it doesn't have enough power to handle uh, higher resolutions. If you find that you're crashing even on 3x, you might need to drop it back down to 1x. Now we're going to go all the way down to PGXP Geometry Correction and turn it on. Now thankfully there's descriptions for each of these options if you want to know what they do. But the next two options under that are going to turn on by default and then we can leave all the others at off except for the PGXP vertex cache. We want to turn that on. Now there's other settings uh, in here that you might prefer to experiment with, but I find that uh, these particular settings that I've pointed out to you provide a nice experience, very smooth for both 2D and 3D PlayStation games. Here's what it looks like with all those settings in place. This image is just so clean. I love it. Here is an example of a 3D game. This is with no graphic enhancements whatsoever and at 1x internal resolution. Here is no graphical enhancements except for the Duimon Mega Bezel Shader. And here is the shader plus the core options graphic enhancements. Pretty awesome. That'll wrap it up for this video. Till next time, happy gaming my friends.